in this video we're going to be making this super cute heart sock and this is a child sock this was made for my nine-year-old daughter who wears I think she wears like a size two right now so she has or an adult with very very skinny feet the yarn we are using for the sock actually, let me take this the wrapper off so you can see this is the yarn I got in my January um, yarn box. It was the Mosaic Moon. Here's the information on it. Which, of course, a direct link, if you would like to get this yarn yourself, is in the description below. And here's all the rest of the information on it. And it's really neat because this is a hand-dyed yarn. Which I love that aspect. Of course, it did come in a big hank, so I went and done it in a couple spools. Now, tools you will need. I'm making this on the 50 peg, 1 fourth inch gauge uh, woman's glove loom, I believe is the actual title of it, from premiumknittinglooms.com or Cindy Woodcrafts. The direct link to the website and the loom is in the description below. You'll need your loom tool. The toe of this, we do Kitchener. So, two, number two, double point knitting needles. If you do not have double point knitting needles and you are not a, ne a needle knitter at all, and you really don't want to go out and buy them, you can actually take um, toothpicks if you need to, which you'll need at least four toothpicks if you're substituting toothpicks for the knitting needles. A tapestry needle. I like the metal one with the tip like that the best, but you use whatever you'd like. And I'm using a small crochet hook. The crochet hook is only used to weave in your ends. Other than that, you may want a row counter. You'll need a ruler and a pair of scissors. So let's get started. To start, I'm actually going to take a piece of scrap yarn. This will be removed later. And you want it in a contrasting color, so I'm going to use red. We'll take and e-wrap the whole loom. But as you notice, I'm going to hold this up real close. I'm going to tell you which pegs are marked. This white one's peg one. So one, two, three, four, five, peg six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-five. Those are the pegs that you mark which as you can see I just use stitch markers um, these stitch markers right here are actually perfect for these fine gauge looms because they're small enough to just go right over the peg which I hope I put that on the right one I'll check it one two three four five six seven. one two three four five six seven. yes <laughs> anyway I should pay attention when I take it off they fit right over the pegs in the way they're made you can remove them during the project if you would like. Um, these are marking out, this white one here is marking out half the loom. The ones on the sides here, the three on this side and the three on this side, are marking out where you do your heart at. The one in the middle is the middle point of the heart and the two on the outside is the edges of the heart. I just found that easier to keep track of where I was at with the heart. Now we can get back to this. Cast on the entire loom with your e-wrap. So you're just e-wrapping every peg all the way okay, around. Okay, once you are done wrapping the whole loom, I take both the strands together and just wrap around my anchor peg. And then we will need our working yarn. Now, if you do not want to use the mosaic moon yarn this is a fingering weight yarn so pretty much any sock yarn will work for this pattern um, 
this yarn is a wool cashmere blend and I really like the collars in it. It's got it's a, a beigey collar, base collar with pinks and purples and I just thought that went it was very um, comp a very complimenting collar blend for the hearts. But that's just me. Okay. Let's wrap our anchor. Actually, I will wrap our beginning yarn. Run it down through the inside and wrap that with those. That way it's just all together. Now the body of this sock is done using the official knit stitch, not the e-wrap stitch, but the official knit stitch, which is also referred to as the reverse purl. So if you're unfamiliar with this stitch, you know to purl, you bring your yarn up through the bottom. For this stitch, you take your yarn down through the top. You have your loop, and then you take the original yarn off the peg and add your new. I will show you a couple more times. If you need a better tutorial, I do have other videos that will show you how to do this stitch. Now, on this first round, you need to make sure you do not grab that you grab all of the red that you don't accidentally split it see look it's wanting to pull I could just pull and loosen that up but there we go you want to make sure you have the red yarn is completely separated from your working yarn you will do your reverse purl stitch for half the loom because we're going to start it's a toe up sock so you will purl, I'm sorry, you will knit 25 pegs. So you have peg 1 to 25 with your knit stitch. Now we're going to turn around. See, I don't want this edge here to be too bulky, so I'm not going to knit that one again. Instead, I'm going to go back skip that one you will find after you have that first row the knit stitches go a lot faster but I will knit back to peg number two I knitted back to peg two so peg one we haven't done yet but we are starting with our toe so we are actually right here and we need to decrease our rows and then we need to increase our rows. So we are working on the decrease. Now to do your decrease, take the loop off the peg, put your working yarn behind it, put the loop back on the peg. Now that loop has two stitches on it and you're going to go back and forth and decrease like this. So we will decrease two peg number 24 now. We, I mean, we will knit to peg number 24 So now. we knitted all the way through peg 24 and peg 25 will be a decrease. Put the working yarn back on. And now we will knit down to peg number okay, 3. So we knitted peg 3. So you'll take the yarn off peg 2, put your working yarn behind it and put that back on. See, because we'd already done peg one. So now we've done peg two. So now you will knit down. So this was 25, 24. So peg 23, you will take the yarn off of peg 24, put your working yarn behind it. And you're going to knit back and forth like this, decreasing one each time until you decrease seven on each side. So we one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one past your marked peg there. One, two, three, four, five, six, and of course the same on the other side. Then we will talk, then I will show you how to do your increases. Okay, we have all of our decreases. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now it's behind the seventh one going in that direction. So this one is the seventh. Now we are going to start our increases. Let me zoom this in so I can hold it down here, make it a little easier on me. Okay. Yep. 
So the yarn's coming from behind. So we're still holding it in front and we're going to do our increases now. Going in this direction is a little awkward for me. I'm going to try to hold it so you can see what I'm doing. We're still doing the knit stitch. So you're going to do it all the way down to the other side. You're going to pick up that first doubled peg. Which I'll okay, go so I just finished the toe with all the increases. So all of these just have one stitch on them now. At this point, all you're going to do is start to work in the round. So you're going to be picking up all of these pegs right here. And then instead of going back and forth, you'll be just going in the round. You're going to continue with your heart stitch, your heart pattern that you're working on, which it ended at row 11. So your next row around, you'll do row 12 and you'll just keep following this pattern. At the end of the heart, you'll do four rows of just your knit stitch and then you'll get back into the heart design starting at the bottom working your way up of course the pdf does have all this rowed out and you'll do this until you get the body as long as you need it to be for my daughter now this makes kid socks this pattern can be converted to the knitted knocker loom um, which will do adult size socks but for this sock right here my daughter's foot I believe she's in a size two shoe right now, but her foot measured eight inches long and her foot's not very, it's not um, extra wide. If the foot's extra wide, then you're gonna need to knit the body longer. But for my daughter, for, I, for an average child, she's nine years old, her foot measures eight inches long. I measured the body of the foot two inches shorter. So I measured it six inches long before I started the heel. Now, as you can see, when I did the heel, I was actually in the middle of a heart at that point. So it doesn't matter where you stop because you'll just pick right up and it will not be noticeable on the front side. So continue to go in the round. Do this, you know, where you got three, four, five inches down. And then I'll show you how to connect the toe which is a it's a Kitchener stitch so you'll connect it on the bottom side of the sock and it'll be completely unnoticeable okay I've got the sock work down I've done four hearts and I started my fifth um, I've already made one sock so I know how long I need to make it but just to do the Kitchener just make it down long enough to work it uh, three hearts down would be plenty long enough now, of course, these are what I'm going to be using. I don't need that for the Kitchener. For the Kitchener. Uh, ideally, I have a flat tip tapestry needle. It's a dull point, and the tip's kind of flat, and it bends. I have misplaced it, so I'm using this one. This is a sharp point. If you're using a sharp point needle, you got to make sure you don't, like, split your yarn because it's very easy to be going and accidentally catch part of the yarn with it since it's sharp and two double point knitting needles. I'm using size twos. If you don't have double points, like I said, you can use um, toothpicks or something. You just have to make sure you do not do your, your Kitchener too tight. On this one, I use size one knitting needles just to see what the difference would be. And I did it a, a little tighter than normal. On this outside, you can't tell, but on the inside, there's a small ridge because of doing that. So if you do use something other than size two knitting needles, just make sure you're not pulling it too tight. Learn from my mistakes. <laughs> okay, so for this Kitchener, you see these loops at the top? We're gonna be picking all of those up. And this was a 50 peg loom, so we'll have 25 on one uh, needle and then 25 on the other. I find it easier to start on this flat side first and you can see this stitch right here is going into it. So we're gonna pick that up right at the top. But you wanna make sure you're just getting the yarn, well, not your original yarn. And you might need, oops, sorry. You might need to stretch it a bit just because it's easy to mistake and get the next row down. 
So all you're going to be doing is picking up. Once you get those rolled up, you'll be picking up every... See, oops. see there's a line. I'm skipping a line, picking up the next one, because that will be that next stitch. Skipping one, picking up one. Skipping one, picking up one. Being very careful to only get that yarn and not your cast one yarn. Go ahead and do this all the way across until you have 25 stitches. First on side is done. I went through and recounted, make sure there was 25 stitches there. Now we're going to pick up the next. Now there's a stitch right here. You can see the yarn. Let's see if I can flip it inside out to where you can see. Right there it is, that long piece right there. So you want to make sure you pick that up. Because if you miss picking up any of these stitches, it could cause um, that section to unravel. So <laughs> you want to be very, very careful. And I do want to show you right here is where we were doing our initial increase, no, decreases, sorry. Just, it'll be the first couple well, increases and decreases. You can see the seam right here. So these ones are a little harder to see. You just have to kind of hold that yarn up and look for what is being held by the yarn on the top. And then just pick those up. And after those first couple, those first couple are the trickiest ones. After them, you should be able to just go right across and get the rest. And see how I'm rolling it up each time? That is so that I know I'm getting that top row because if it's not rolled up, it's very, very easy to get the second or third row down. And then you'll have a big seam. It can be seamless on the outside, but on the inside you'll have a row that's bubbled up. Go ahead and do this side and I'll show you how to take the cast right. on string out. So this is what it's going to look like. Now the one in where your cast on string is, is going to be opened up a little wider than the other end and that is perfectly fine. Don't worry about that. I've already threaded my cast on string, which of course you want to make sure you wrap the cast on string three times around the loom before you start your cast on so that you have enough to sew this up. Something like this, it wouldn't be too big of a problem to use a scrap piece to do that, but if you have any type of yarn that um, has collar work in it to where it's variegated, like this is different collars, but it's not really so much in a pattern. If it's something in a pattern, you want to use this original cast on string because then it's going to match up. Also, if you use the original cast on string, then you have less um, stuff to weave in on the inside. That's less chances of things coming apart. Sorry, my computer did something. Okay. So now we need to take this cast on string out. Now this takes a little bit of work because you got to figure out which side it's going to come from easier. And you just take your loom tool and just pull that string out. And on purpose, I caught the second string a couple in a couple places um, because sometimes that happens. So I caught a little bit of it there. But if it starts pulling too much, like that one's pulling a lot, just take your scissors, don't cut that string, and cut that and take that out. And then you are good to just keep going. Which I'll do part of this with you because you're just going to follow all the way around to the other end. If you've caught it a lot, it's not going to hurt to just pull little loops up like this and then just cut each one. Or you can go through and cut all these and just pull them out. If pulling it through is proving to be a little too, uh, just a little too much for you. Or if you notice you're pulling on it too much and you're stretching these stitches out a lot, then you can just cut them and go. But just keep doing this 
all the way around to the other end where until that entire cast on string is off. Still working on taking the cast on string out, but my cat has come over and he's doing something pretty cute. So that's Dexter. He's sleeping on my printer, on a pile of paper in front of my printer. All stretched out on my keyboard. Happy as can be. Hi, Dexter. This is what he does during most of my videos. I know, I know. All right, I'll get He's back to still at it. Okay, I am done at this point though. I've got all that cast on string out. Now you notice if you see like, I see some red fuzzies, you could just take and just pull those right out because it will show in your seam if you've got a lot of fuzz from the yarn. All right, let me adjust this some. My buddy. Sorry, he's wanting to play. Okay. You can adjust this some so that, well, I'm adjusting this some so it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. And put it in a spot where I can keep it in the camera. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna go over how to do this because this is a needle knitting technique and I'm doing it the needle knitting way but there are other ways you can do the Kitchener uh, bind off or the Kitchener heel, Kitchener toe, whatever you want to do. There are different ways you can do it. There are some people, uh, Scarlet Royal has a couple really nice videos of different methods that you can use and you would have to do your cast on a little different if you choose to pick one of those instead, because that's how she does hers. Okay, so our yarn is coming from in between the needles. That is good. Now, when needle knitting, if you're going through, we'll call this the back of the stitch, that is called a knit. If you're going through the front of the stitch, that is called a purl. For our first set, this first peg, which I gotta make sure I'm getting just the loop. For that first peg, that first stitch on that first needle, we are going to purl. The one on the back, we are going to knit. That is just to kind of set this up. Now your yarn is always gonna go below the knitting needles and above your tapestry needle. See, I got a little red fuzz ball stuck right there. I wanna pull that out before I keep going. There we go. You see, I've got a little bit stuck on my yarn. Okay, get that out of the way. All right, now the way this goes, I'm gonna say it, you're gonna be confused, but don't worry, I'm explaining everything. Knit, slip, purl, purl, slip, knit. You gotta remember that knit slip purl, purl slip knit. If you need to, you can pause, you can watch how to do this and you can kind of pause and come back to it uh, as much as you need to just to make sure you're doing it correctly. Which I, the first few times I did a Kitchener, uh, Kitchener seam, I had to do that. So what that means is our first stitch in our first peg, we are going to knit. Somehow I got that stuck on those, okay. What slip means is you're gonna slip that stitch off. Now after each one, tug just a little bit, not real tight. So knit, slip, now we're gonna purl. Go to this back one, purl. Tighten up a little bit, slip. I'll work a few. So here we go. Knit. Make sure the yarn is below everything. Slip. Purl. And purl. Slip. 
knit. Do a couple more. So we got knit. Now make sure you're just getting just the string on the loop without splitting it. Knit slip. We got a pearl. Because actually, I was about halfway down with this and realized that it wasn't turning out quite right. So I undid it all the way back to the beginning and now we're having a second go at it. That's why this side, they're kind of loose. So my tension might not be perfect on it because I've redone it, but it'll still give you an idea of what it looks like. Pearl. Slip. Knit. I'll do one more. Knit. Slip. Okay. Pearl. All right, go ahead and just keep working it down until you have just a couple left on each. Um, okay. needle. I have two stitches left on each. I just did the knit slip pearl and pearl slip knit. So I just knit that last stitch. So I'm going back to the first. I'm going to knit. Slip one. There we go. And pearl. This last one, then take it out, and then purl this front one. Slip one, and knit. And you can take that out. At this point, what I like to do is you want to get that going to, oops, sorry, is that a focus? Kind of get that going to the inside, pull it in, let me zoom out some. And then you can weave that in, tie it in, everything on the inside. But where I would said I had accidentally split some of the yarn and I was having trouble getting it perfect see so it kind of stretched it out so my Kitchener isn't perfect but it's still going to stretch with everything and it's on the bottom of the foot so that's not bad but see this one right here is a lot better but I'd already stretched out these stitches and undid it and redid it and kind of jacked it up a bit um but at this point, that I will worry about weaving in later. I've got it going down through the inside. Shove that in there. Now these socks, I need to make them the same length as the other one. And my daughter's foot was eight inches long, so I need to make the socks six inches long. So I just have a couple more rows to get to the six inches, which what I'm doing is I'm just putting a ruler in it, and I'm not, like, because I could stretch it and say, hey, that's at six, but it's really not. I kind of hold it up a little bit just to see where it naturally falls. And I'm actually about five and a half, so I have about a half inch to do. And then we can do our Done heel. a few more rows. And see, when I push it down, I'm right at the six. So now we can do the heel. The heel is a repeat of the toe. You're going to just stop your row counter where if you're in the middle of a heart, you're just going to kind of stop your row counter at that point. You will pick it up at the spot where you left off as soon as you're done with the heel. Okay, now I'll quickly show you how you're going to be decreasing seven 
and then increasing seven for the heel. And it's not on this side, it's gonna be on the opposite side because your hearts are going up the front. You want the heel on the opposite side of the hearts. So I'm at, and it's the heart, sorry, the heel is gonna be worked from these 25 pegs here. So that'll be the end peg, that'll be the beginning peg. And the way you remember that is your stitch markers for the toe. It'll be one back from both of those. That's the start for the toe, so we're gonna use this one. Which what we will do, purl all the way to, not purl, sorry. You will do the knit stitch all the way to one before your stitch marker for the toe on the other side. All right, so there's that red stitch marker, which was our marker for the toe. So this is gonna be the first one for the heel. So you take the loop off the peg, put the working yarn behind it and put that loop back on. And then you will knit all the way down to this peg. De and lifting it up and putting the yarn behind it, that's a decrease. So you'll decrease this one, you'll go back go back and decrease that one. You'll decrease one on each side until you've decreased seven on both. My decrease is done. Right now you're not really seeing much. You can tell it's starting to lay a little flatter. Now to do the increase, but let me show you real quick. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. The seventh one, it's behind. So when we go across, that'll be number seven. On this side we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you're doing your increase the exact same way. You are going to do your knit stitch down, pick up that first one with the double, go back, pick up this one, then you'll pick up that one, then this one, then that one, and that one. And you'll do your increase until all these pegs have been picked up and there's every single peg on a loom only has one loop on it. Just like you did for the toe that's when you will start working in the round again. At this point, you should be back here and then you can just start working in the round. Now you gotta remember, if you're in the middle of a heart design, depending on the size you're making, you need to pick up at the exact same row so that it'll be seamless. And then finish your heart design, do four rows, do another heart, do four rows. This last heart though, I went ahead and did a heart on the back. It's optional. You can if you want, you don't have to. That's why these pegs on this side are marked. So what you're gonna do, if you want it to look like this one, finish the heart you're on and do four rows. And then when you do your next heart, you gotta remember your center part, your center pegs are marked right here. You'll start with those ones and you'll work your way out and do your heart shape on both sides. Then you're gonna do 15 rows of a single rib stitch. You're going to knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one for 15 rows and I'll show you how to do your cast off. We're now at the cast off part of this pattern. As you can see, I've done 15 rows of single rib stitch that is knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, all the way around each row if it was knit before, it was knit that time. If it's purled before, it's purled that time. Now to do the cast off, you want to take your, sorry, you want to take your working yarn and wrap three times around the loom and then cut. That's what we're going to use to do this cast off. The cast off I'm going to be using, show you how it turns out, is a super stretchy cast off. It's a cast off that has a lot of give to it, but also will return to its original shape. All right, let me zoom in for this. To do this cast off, you're going to skip, your yarn is coming from this peg, you're going to skip this peg, go to the next, pull the yarn up through, go back one, pull the yarn down. Gotta make sure when you skip the peg, you want the yarn in front. So you will skip one, pull the yarn up, 
go back one, pull the yarn down. You're going to do this all the way around till you get back to your first peg. Then you will just take everything off the loom, weave in your ends, and you are done. I'll do a few more just so you can really see how I'm doing it. There you go, you do that all the way around and then you can just take everything off the loom. Thank you so much for watching. Any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. If it is a question directly about the pattern itself, uh, please email me, that way I don't miss the question. I do get a lot of questions about um, patterns and I get a lot of comments on my YouTube channel and it's hard to keep up with them. If you're interested in the loom I used, you can purchase this loom through cindywoodlooms.com. The direct link is in the description below. If you're interested in the yarn, you can actually go through Mosaic Moon or you can go through yarnbox.com and get the yarn. Uh, the link for that is in the description below as well. Again, thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.